What's up guys, Mar Ortiz here from the Orion. We're here at the Chico Reptile Show. Over a thousand species I heard. Let's go inside and find out. All right, we're here inside. Let's walk around. Hi, my name is Andrew Duarte. I'm with Four Way Reptiles. I breed ball pythons, leopard geckos, and panther chameleons. What can you tell us about this chameleon right here? This, pan this is a panther chameleon. The locality of it is an ambilobi, yellow body blue bar. Uh, it just meaning that the part of Madagascar that it comes from, it gives it the yellow body with the blue barring. They're from Madagascar, as I said. They, uh, they're, they're cool animals to have. They're very colorful. It's all about the rainbow with these guys. What are the challenges on raising a chameleon that owners don't know, or if they're interested, what should they be like expect? Uh, expect to put a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your chameleon. They, they, they are an animal that needs a lot of attention compared to like some of these other reptiles that, you know, you only need to clean and feed once a week. These guys, you got to be prepared to feed them every other day, clean their cages every day because they are very messy for being a, a small lizard. Uh, their feeding habits could be very tricky. Sometimes they're picky to eat, so you got to kind of be prepared to do a few different tricks to get them to eat. And then another thing to kind of watch out for is uh, you want to make sure you have the proper enclosure because a lot of people don't have the proper lighting or proper setup and they run into respiratory infection or uh, MBD, which is meta metabolical bone disease, which is the bones didn't grow properly. So if you have your lighting and enclosure properly, then you should have no issue raising your chameleon. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, man. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. Joe Cruz, uh, Mighty Morph for Reptiles. Awesome. Yep. I'm out of Woodland. Woodland? Yep, out of Woodland. Yeah. Cool. Yep. All right, well, do you have a favorite or? Um, I mean, this one's probably my favorite here today, to be honest. Why is that? Yeah, just the genetics and the, the quality of the snake, the color. I mean, yeah, it's just a project that I've been working on for the last couple seasons and just to keep reproducing it is, is pretty awesome, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, yeah. we'll see it. Yeah, yeah. We're about to witness the snake that matches my shirt. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, tell, can you tell us something about this breed? Yeah, so this is a Coral Glow uh, special 100% head pied. The pied is the, the white snake, so it's like got recessive to it. It's just not the visual. But uh, yeah, this is just a little project that I kind of envisioned uh, two seasons ago. And so to able to reproduce it again like this season I produced it last season and to reproduce it is is really cool you know yeah. yeah but and the best thing about it is um my idea for it was to for it to keep the color into adulthood and the ones that I produced last year did oh, cool. so that's like a huge a huge yeah. thing yeah cuz a lot Does that of, make it cost more yeah i mean it makes the value go up but it's just the quality like cuz a lot of times in ball pythons like their best days are when they're born and then as they age, the color kind of fades. But oh, okay. like with this, this adding the special, it actually holds the color into adulthood. So it, it just makes it, you know, more enjoy like the desirable snake the whole time, you know, not just as it ages, it kind of dulls out a little bit. Yep. But awesome. yeah, yeah. This is a project I'm super excited about. Yeah. Would you like to show us one more? Yeah, sure. You can pick one. Go ahead. Whatever you want to pick one? What should we pick? <laughs> Let's look at these. Pull out the pie. Yeah, well, what's, you have, what's your biggest one, you think? We could pull out the pie. He's the prettiest one, too, so. The cool. biggest one, you know? I mean, he, yeah. So he's an adult male. Uh, yeah, I produced this guy in um, 2016. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a double visual uh, of a recessive genetic. So it's a pastel hypo and pied. Pied is what creates the white. Hypo like intensifies the color and keeps it nice too with age. Yeah. Oh, well, we can put them in the light. Yeah. And like, what are the issues that you run into like owning like if you want to own one of these snakes, you know? I mean, there's not a lot of issues as long as you purchase it from a person who takes care of them well and gets them going good, and then somebody who's willing to mentor you too especially if you're a first time snake owner and you know there's not a lot of issues to be honest like they're really good pets they're really good snakes um yeah there's not a whole lot of issues they're as long as you just 
do your research, you yeah. know? Yeah, there's not too many issues. And genetic-wise, like, there's definitely not a lot of issues. Like, I, I try to produce, like, the highest quality of everything so that there's no problems genetically, you know? Yeah. And then breeding, too. You got to have find buy from a responsible breeder who's not breeding, like, you know, improperly to yeah. cause issues. Yeah. Yep. Well, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Good luck Thanks with everything. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, and then, nice do you have you. a website or something? Uh, I don't have a website, but like Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, it's just all under Mighty Morpher Reptiles. Yeah. Oh, yep. Appreciate it. Yeah. My name is Elon Miller. I'm with Diamond Reptiles and Supplies out of San Mateo, California. What can you tell us about the snake? This is a Columbia red tail bow. It was a rescue. It is a male, and they are wonderful snakes. What makes them so wonderful, you think? Honestly, they're just super docile compared to, like, a colubra that might be quicker. You know, these guys literally move a little bit slower. Um, of course, it depends on the snake. Every snake is different. So if you get a red tail bow, you might get one that's a jerk. But the thing is, is making up, taming them out. So snakes are able to be docile. The more you handle, the more they're going to be more docile. What are you feeding it? I'm sorry? What are you feeding this? I feed it in their cage. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people will be like, oh, I feed it outside the cage. You don't need to feed them outside the cage. I, or I literally feed them inside. And what I do is a hook training. So I take a snake hook and I'll rub them and let them know I'm not food. Then I'll take them out. And you said he was a rescue. Where'd you rescue him? He from a gentleman that um, was getting rid of some snakes. Oh, OK, cool. Yeah. Brought him back, got him a little bit fatter, nice and thick, and stuff like that. What, what can people expect when they have a a, you know, a pretty big snake like this. Nothing but the best, baby. Really? Yeah, absolutely. They're fun. People like to see them because they're huge. It's not something you see every day. It's exotic, and a lot of people are scared of them because usually people get scared of them due to the movies or maybe their mom and dad had a phobia of reptiles, and so they never had a chance to really touch a snake or hold a snake, and the, the Chico Reptile Expo allows you to do that. And how long have you been handling snakes and, like, your journey of that, you know? Seven years old. I got my first ball python. Her name was Sheba. Sheba? Yep. Seven. And you just kept it going the whole time? Kept it going. I always owned the snake, but then I got into dog breeding, and then I always had reptiles, so I was like, you know what? I'm done with the dogs. You need a lot of space for them. So then I went back to doing reptiles. Awesome. But of course, I always have dogs as well now. <laughs> and how do you manage the snakes and the dogs, I, you know? Well, I don't breed dogs anymore. I only have two, so I have a Dalmatian and American Bully, but I do all reptiles. So we do we breed chameleons, bearded dragons, milk snakes, um, king snakes, uh, boa constrictors, ball pythons. We do a little bit of a lot of different reptiles, and we do captive bred. So we get captive bred in if we don't know if we don't have the reptile you're looking for. We know someone that's either breeding it or we or we'll find it for you. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Can you tell us your name first and yes. like this company? Absolutely, my name is Nayeli Orozco. I'm a zoologist. Um, my company is called Killer Clutches. We are local based out of Chico. Um, we have a local shop that's open five days a week um, for all of your reptile needs. Okay, what can you tell us about these lizards you have right here? <laughs> so this guy right here is Charizard. He is a super red trans bearded dragon. Um, to get them this saturated is actually very difficult and it takes several years of um, selective breeding to get this exact color. And then this guy over here is Apocalypse and this is a super, super rare um, bearded dragon breed. Um, there's only a handful of this exact saturation uh, in the US. This was actually a Chinese import. Um, all bearded dragons are from Australia naturally, but they have been captive bred in several countries over several decades and this particular bloodline was developed in China. Um, so yeah, he was imported here as a baby and we're working to make some more beautiful dark red uh, and black babies like him. 
Now, when you have to pick out a partner, do you try to match the colors, or how does that work? Absolutely. So it comes down to both color, structure, um, and genetics. Um, a lot of people get really carried away about the color because, you know, it's so beautiful, but it really comes down to getting the healthiest dragon with the best structure. You don't want anything that's too thin or not thriving well. Um, so we based off of structure first, the healthiest animals, then we match up genetics because certain genetics you don't want to mix um, because it makes unhealthy offspring. Okay. Um, and then you go off color third. And obviously we usually try to do, if we're going for yellow dragons, breed really re yellow to really yellow together or orange to orange and red to red. But I do like mixing colors occasionally. Um, and then you get some really cool dragons that have multiple different colors on them, like the rainbow tigers, which have the orange, yellow, blue on them. Very unique animals. Yeah, these are pretty cool. And so have you guys been personally doing this one too, or did you buy them like no, this? Yeah, these guys, um, this one we imported, but we actually have his babies hatching next week. Oh. So we're going to have some red monsters available soon. This one was produced by us, and we also have some of his babies available. Um, but we breed the majority of our animals, uh, and we work with things from fear to dragons to snakes to lizards, all kinds of stuff. And like, what about your love for animals and reptiles, especially? <laughs> how, how has that grown and, uh, or started? I mean, since I was a kid, I was the weird one in my family that was going around um, catching lizards, catching snakes. Uh, love science, love genetics, so I dedicated my career to it. Like I said, I went to school for five years to get my zoology degree. Um, I worked as an animal biologist for a long time while just developing my hobby. I've been keeping and breeding reptiles for um, over almost nine years now. Um, and then I decided to just kind of do it full time and make it a business and really kind of share my love for the hobby for to other people in the community. Did you go to school at Chico State too? I did not. I went to Humboldt State University. I, I did get accepted to Chico. I almost went there. <laughs> well, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about these lizards or like the pros and cons yeah, of owning absolutely. one? Or? So as far as pets, they make phenomenal pets. As you can see, they're really tame. They're really calm. Um, they don't get too big, uh, but they do have very specific requirements as far as care goes. So I always just recommend any animal you're trying to get, make sure you do enough research on it. Um, you know exactly what its care requirements are before bringing it home to ensure that it's going to thrive. But if you're looking for a lizard that's going to make a phenomenal pet, beardies are definitely the way to go. Well, thank you. Of course. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank Have you. Have rest of your day. You too. We're here looking for Bruce. He's the one who threw this event. All right, well, we're here with? Bruce Smith-Peters. And I heard you're a professor at Chico State? Yeah, I'm a lecturer in uh, multicultural gender and sexuality studies. And you're also in charge of this whole event? Yeah, I'm the producer of the Chico Reptile Show. We've been doing this since 2013. And what, what has led you to do this, you know? It was late nights driving home from shows hours and hours away and just thinking there's got to be some way to do something closer to home. And yeah. I decided, well, I'm going to try it. And, and like, how'd you, like, what was like the, you had to go get in touch with the city? Um, we just contract through the, um, the fair here, the fairgrounds, and um, just get the word out to vendors and uh, get the word out to the public. And over these last... 10 years or so, it's just grown and grown and grown. It's been a wonderful thing. You know, the best part about it is the kids just have the most fun. You know, yeah. they get to see these huge tortoises and snakes and other kinds of lizards and get a, like an up close and personal kind of experience with it. It's really good. And what about your love for reptiles? When did that start? And Well, when I was a boy, I had um, little anoles. They called them American chameleons. And, um, and then I got into fish when I had kids and then, um, about 2009, um, I started to sell wood at reptile shows, and it just kind of grew from there. Do you have any reptiles at home? Uh, yeah, I'm mostly an amphibian guy, so I've got um, some newts and uh, this Vietnamese mossy frog, and I've got um, a leopard ge gecko as well. It's I've pared down. Yeah, I used to have I used to have a frog room oh, with right. you know more than a hundred frogs and you know all kinds of stuff. And how do you think the community has like accepted all these reptiles and stuff? You know, it's something that in the last 20 years, the reptile trade has just grown tremendously, and there's so many interesting animals out there, and that's what, you know, a lot of people love to see is just come and get, you know, see something rare and pick up, you know, something that's uh, interesting. What do you, th what would you say to the people who 
who like are against having like exotic reptiles and because they're afraid of releasing them out into Chico, especially here at the park. What do you think about that? Well, you know, that's 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 always a concern, and that's why we try to emphasize this responsible keeping, pet keeping. There are a number of reptile rescues in the area so that if you can no longer have your pet, you can take it to a rescue and it'll be you know, taken care of and it won't be endangering the local habitat. All right, well, is there anything else you'd like to talk about the reptile show? No, I just appreciate everybody coming out. It's a good time. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank appreciate you. your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.